Hey, Kevin. Come here, Kevin. Some of the divers out there have been asking me about submersible uh, marker boys and, and uh, how they work. SMBs have had a number, a number of inquiries. Hi, divers. It's Alec Pierce again from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip. A uh, little tip, a little thing that might make your diving easier, more fun, and a bit safer, too. I hope this is of some value to you. We actually have had more than a few requests about SMBs. SMBs are, are becoming more and more common. As a matter of fact, on some of the most recent trips we've been on through Scuba 2000, they've been mandatory. This is an example right here, the Solitude 1 in Palau. Yep, that's where I am. I'm talking to you from Palau. Uh, on the Solitude 1, the use of SMBs is mandatory. And after some of the diving we've done here, exciting diving. Sometimes involving currents, and currents shift back and forth. Sometimes we're deep, we can't go up. We've really learned the value of SMBs. So let me take a minute and share some things that I've learned on this trip. First of all, I want to point out that there are different types of SMBs. A true SMB, meaning surface marker buoy, is simply that. It's just a marker buoy to show the dive boat where you are. This is not a dive flag, a little float. This is a marker buoy that sticks up out of the water. So if you're some distance from the dive boat when you surface, the dive boat can see the marker buoy, see where you are, and come over and pick you up. The simplest true SMB, surface marker buoy, looks something like this. They're quite inexpensive, little pouch to hold it in. And all it really is is a, is a tube, a brightly colored tube that unfolds. And when you're ready to use it, you actually unfold it like this. Do a little quick press and you now have a four foot tube that sticks up out of the water. Now, this particular one doesn't have anything fancy about it. There's no relief valves, nothing else. You blow it up and you hold onto this when you're on the surface. And if you hold it just under the surface, the water pressure keeps it straight up out of the water. So this is what's sticking up. Boats can see you for miles and the boat will come to get you. A surface marker boy. That's all this is. Simple, inexpensive, and can be quite valuable. Now, a true SMB, as is often described today, is actually technically called a D SMB. D as in delayed SMB. It's still a surface marker, surface marker boy. The delay comes from the fact that you don't wait until you're at the surface to inflate it, you do it beforehand. Maybe as, as you're quite deep, it could be as deep as 30, 40, or 50 feet. You might wait, as many divers do, until they're at their safety stop, 15 feet. Then they deploy the DSMB. The SMB, the service marker boy, goes to the surface and sticks up, just as the earlier one did. But this one is different. It has a line on it, usually attached to a reel, so that you can stay underwater, either at depth or, more commonly, at your 15-foot safety spot. And you stay there for the required three or four minutes, whatever your safety time is. The boat can see where you are, and the boat can start going over to your surface marker boy, and they can wait for you to then surface. So you see, you see the slight difference. An SMB, as opposed to a delayed or DSMB, the way to tell them apart is simple. A DSMB has to have a line on it. If it doesn't have a line on it, then it's just a surface marker boy. We're all called SMBs, quite frankly. I'm just giving you some technical information here. Now, I have here also a couple of examples of DSMBs. We're just going to call them SMBs. So a DSMB is very similar in many ways. A DSMB is also a very brightly lit tube. This one is bright yellow. It seems long. It says diver below on it. This one's about six feet long. Most SMBs are between four and ten feet. Six feet is probably the most the most practical. Not too long, you can still carry it around, but plenty high enough. What are the differences in between this SMB and the other, besides what I've already mentioned, the line that's on it? Well, this has a lot of little extras. There's a sleeve up here into which you can put a light, particularly if you're diving at night. You can put a silume or a chemical light or a battery operated light in the air to have it flashing. That's a nice little trick to have on the top. Now at the bottom, there are more obvious differences. First of all, while it does have an inflator, not unlike the earlier style, which you can also use to inflate like this. See? It also has another funny thing here. This is a valve. This is a dump valve. The earlier SMB did not have a dump valve because you're not underwater with it. You come to the surface, you inflate it. The amount of air in that SMB doesn't change. With these SMBs, you inflate them underwater, 30, 40, 50 feet down, and then you let them go to the surface. As that happens, the air expands. There has to be some way to dump air out of it, and that's what this valve is for. Another difference is, since it's a little more difficult to orally inflate underwater, these delayed SMBs have an opening on the bottom like that. 
and that allows you to put air in. It's very common to use your safe second, your octopus. Pull it off, stick it underneath, not in, just underneath so the air from the edge, when you, when you push the first button, the air goes up inside. You don't want to put the octopus up inside because it might get caught when it shoots to the surface. And of course, we're talking using the safe second only, never your primary. So that'll happen. Also, this particular model has some weight, so there's lead weight in there. That'll help to keep it upright. Very often, if you're not very careful without practice, the SMB will come to the surface. It's supposed to be sticking out of the water, but it gets it and flops over and lays on the surface. It does very little value at all. A couple of ways to overcome that make sure there's enough air in the SMB. The weights help, but also if you keep tension on the line, that pulls the SMB down and makes it stand up on the water. You'll see some of these things in the little video we have of the real thing. Also, this SMB, being a delayed SMB, has a reel on it with a hook. You take the hook off like so, and now you hang on to the reel. As the SMB shoots to the surface, the line comes up. When it gets to the surface, you grab the line, hold it snugly, keep the SMB standing straight up, do your safety stop, the boat can see you, and you're picked up safely. This particular SMB is almost exactly the same, but it's even simpler. It's a very, very simple SMB. This is the one that, that uh, our good friend here on the on the Solitude One uses. We've met Amanda previously in some of our videos. This is the one that she uses, and it's very, very simple. A tube, dump valve, of course, opening on the bottom, and you're real. You're actually going to see this MB. Ah, there's Amanda right now. Amanda, come on over here. Hi, there's Amanda from the Solitude One, our uh, dive master. And in the few minutes, you're going to see her underwater deploying her SMB. Can you think of anything like this, Amanda, that could be a problem? Sometimes you've got to remember to hold on to that rear, and if you let go of it, it doesn't help you very much. Uh, that could be embarrassing. I can understand that. Yeah, your SMB's up there, but you're not. Exactly. Yeah. That's important as well. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah. I wanted to point out as well this, this neat little valve that's on here. Most of them are like this. It's a little bit of a juggling act to do this underwater. One of our readers asked about it. This valve is a little odd. And if you look at the end, you might recognize it. it looks very much like your buoyancy compensator spigot. You can actually take your low pressure hose from your buoyancy compensator, push it on there. See how easy it is? There we go. And inflate it using the low pressure inflator of the DC. Of course, that would require you to take the low pressure inflator hose off the buoyancy compensator inflator. Use it to inflate the, the, the SMB and then put it back on, which might be more difficult and more jumping underwater. And you don't really need anything more complicated than necessary. Maybe the use of a safe second is the easiest thing to do. You might have a second low pressure hose, which is very easy to rig up, switch to your local dive store, they can do that for you. I'm just kind of showing you some of the options that are available. I hope this has been interesting. Now, the exciting part, we get to watch Amanda underwater doing her thing right here in Palau, in the currents, showing us how an SMB is properly deployed. I'll see you in a few minutes. Enjoy this. Took three tries to get it right too. Oh, I'm kidding. Amanda's an expert at this, and she deploys that. So she does it like six times a day, and it's worked really, really well. That's from about 40 feet as well. I know she set it up well down, and then you reel the line in as you come up with the safety stuff with the divers. Yeah, that was pretty neat. I really enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Okay, divers, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped a little bit. Alec Pierce, Jet Tips, Scuba 2000. See you again soon.